Fairy Tale Chapter 503, and it's finally fucking here. Wow. Okay, so at the beginning of this chapter, I kind of like, it's like two different halves for me, man. I was like laughing my ass off at the beginning of the chapter because I couldn't really take it seriously because here Mashu was a per pervert. So you have Demaria trying to torture Natsu and Lucy, and she wants to do it by, she first takes off Lucy's top, I guess, to embarrass her. Um, okay, whatever, that's Hero's way of torturing people. And then she was going to strip down Natsu. And I'm like, really? The fuck? Why do they always have to be naked? Whatever. It's part of the game. It's part of this manga. So, you get, uh, <laughs> with this chapter, you get a bit of a cock tease with Demaria, where she's, she threatens to gouge Lucy's eyes out. You know, she meant that, oh, your eyes are so freaking huge, are all the people from Ishgar with this big of eyes. And I'm like, oh, that is kind of true. I guess that's just a trait from Ishgar. Uh, with all their eyes, man, being so big. So she goes and she's about to stab it, and then Lucy's like thinking not to. Oh, first, actually, I liked how Lucy was uh, pretty much cold face and she didn't, she wasn't afraid of Demaria torturing her because it doesn't matter if she took out her eyes, you know, I'll still remember all the good things in my life. So she didn't show any fear. You know, in the past, uh, she was afraid of people kind of torturing her, like I believe in the Avatar arc. But here she has like a cold face and she's like, she's not afraid of anything with all the stuff that she's had to like endure with the past, you know, with her mom and shit like that. She has all her good memories. So to her, it, she wasn't afraid of Demaria at all and that kind of pissed Demaria off. So I really like that about Lucy's character, man. Showing strong. Go Lucy. Anyway, so she th she's about to do it and it goes, psh, goes bling. And, you th and you're thinking that, oh, Nats is probably the one that jumped in or something like that. But then Hero shows Lucy on the floor and her, her face is covered in blood. And I'm like, what the fuck? Did Hero actually go through this? Is he going dark here? But I'm like, mm, nah, nah, come on. This is Hero. He's not that dark. He, like, he likes a cock tease and then he pulls back. And I'm like, okay, that's exactly what happened here. But I'm thinking, okay, where the hell is Demaria? And she's beat up. She's pretty. She's beat the fuck up pretty bad. I guess Lucy must have passed out or something like that. How did that happen? What did she get hit by accident? How did she pass out if she didn't? She didn't get a chance to stab Lucy, and Lucy was just knocked out unconscious, and she was able. She wasn't able to see Natsu go all ham. So here's the thing that I'm kind of wondering here. Demaria mentions that Natsu can't get affected by her time space power. And that she realizes that Natsu is E and D, and she's like scared shitless. It's monstrous. It's a de demonic power that has awakened back from his tumor. So everyone comes over. You have you got the doctor. You got uh, <coughs> a couple other characters that I forgot to mention. Or I'm forgetting to mention. And they're like, "Oh, what happened?" She's like, "I'm not even sure what exactly it is. I don't know if it's a. It's not a tumor, but it's something like a demonic power." And you have Lucy freaking out. And Natsu, with that demonic power, is really fucking OP now more than ever. And here's the thing that I'm wondering is that it looks like Natsu can't exactly control himself. It looks like he went on a rampage with all the soldiers, like, falling over dead. And he's looking for Zeref, and he's, like, got these flames or some kind of power coming out of him. It's, it's, it's definitely his cursed power. But here's the thing is I want Natsu to be able to struggle with this new power, so to say, with this new form. I want to see if Natsu... If there's some kind of other entity inside of Natsu that is E&D that might have Natsu's memories back when he was a child. Because here's the thing. Uh, way back with when we, when we spoke to Atlas Flame, he had mentioned that he was scared shitless of E&D. He called E&D the most powerful, most vile demon from the book of Zeref. If E&D is awakening, there has to be some kind of evil intent with this power. Something that Natsu might not be able to control right now. And I, I want to see some struggle with Natsu. If this is just a power-up and a demon form power-up where Natsu can control it, sort of say, or like he will struggle a little bit. Like if it's just causing him pain, but he can ultimately like direct the power at his enemies and not at his fairy tale guild, I think that's going to really bug me if that's the case. Because we were kind of hinted that this Indy guy's evil, that he is powerful enough to defeat... Zeref, or that he's uh, <clears throat> that he's fucking OP enough to scare Acnologia, or at least make Acnologia worry where he wants to destroy his own book. Because I, I, we also need to know Acnologia why he wants to destroy E and D, and we need some kind of flashback or some information or some hinting. We were getting some hintings on what has happened in the past between Acnologia, Zeref, and E and D, and I don't want it rushed too much, especially with the part where Zeref, where Natsu already has ran into Garrett Gray. 
Towards the end of this chapter, Grey runs into Natsu. And what I liked about Grey's character is that with that little panel, Grey seems calm. He just says Natsu, and he doesn't seem mad or angry or sad or anything. He looks calm and collected. I think he wants to get some answers here. He needs to see where uh, what is wrong with Natsu. Maybe Natsu, just, he, he's probably thinking maybe Natsu just found this out recently. You know, you can't blame Natsu immediately. So I think he wants answers from Natsu. Now, the way um, Natsu was like going all crazy looking for Zeref, either he wants to kill Zeref, which he already did want to do that, or he wants answers from Zeref. He wants maybe the whole truth now from Zeref. He wants him to tell him the, the whole story of what happened between them. Because I'm pretty sure now... He has fully 100% accepted who he is and that he might he exact he is Zareph's brother. And I think that's what he's maybe he's looking for. Maybe he wants answers from Zareph. Uh at least that I, that's that's what I'm really hoping to come from this arc. I want not to to really struggle with this new power. I want him to like struggle with who he is directing that power at because if E&D is supposed to be some kind of evil demon that that struck that struck fear in the dragons and Agnologia and was always going after people and was considered to be vile and evil, there has to be some kind of struggle for Natsu here. I don't want it to be just a regular power-up where Natsu can just, oh, he can tell which was, which who's uh, foe and friend, and then he just ends up being more powerful and he destroys all the spring on 12. I, will, I really don't want that to happen. I want this to be done well. I want the relationship with him and Grey, the, the conflict, to be done really well. People have been hyping this up for a while now, ever since... Uh, the Tartarus arc with uh, Acnologia wanting to kill Indy. This is probably the meat of the story that we have all been anticipating on hearing what has happened with Indy and Acnologia and Zeref and what could happen with Grey and Natsu. We've had some bumpy roads in this war, some really good things, some really shitty things, but I need, they, this needs to be done well if, if, Hiromashu, if Hiromashu can at least go out on top with Fairy Tail, Please do this well. As far as this chapter goes, I thought it was really good. I felt I thought it was a little rushed that Natsu had already met Grey right then and there. But other than that, I thought it was a good chapter. 4.5 out of 5 stars. Fan start out.